Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more of the Great War, and we are on to week 204, the second battle of the Piava River. Before I dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below, I would love if you join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch, and please do go check out the gaming channel here on a YouTube. With all that said, all that out of the way, I really got nothing else to, to say here at the beginning, so uh... Got right in. Last fall, the Central Powers dealt Italy a huge defeat at the Battle of Caporetto, and the Italian Ooh. front has been quiet since then. But no more. This week, the Austrians attack. Not violence bad. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to the Great War. Last week, German and Ottoman troops, though allies, skirmished in the Caucasus. This is all machinations to get control of the Baku oil fields. The Battle of Matz began and ended in the West with a German defeat, and the Austrians were just about to launch a new offensive in Italy. And as this week began, so did that offensive. On June 15, 1918, at 3 a.m., the artillery bombardment for the Second Battle of the Piave River began. It was supposed to go off like at Caporetto, incapacitate the enemy with pinpoint accuracy and copious amounts of gas shells. Thing is, by now, the Italians were equipped with British gas masks, a real improvement, and the Austrian firing accuracy was pretty bad since the oh. Allies controlled the air. They also ran short of shells. But the morning still went well for the Austrians, who managed oh. to get 100,000 men across the Piave River in the rain. However, mm. they couldn't expand their bridgehead, and though in a couple of places they pushed forward three or four kilometers, like the heights of the Montello, they were mostly pinned down at the river. On the Asiago, the second prong of the attack, Italian intelligence knew when things were going to start and preempted the Austrian barrage with a barrage of their own four hours earlier. When oh, General damn. Conrad von Hotzendorf's troops attacked towards Monte Grappa, they pushed back the British and French troops opposite them initially, but the Italian counterattack was a success since the Italians had developed an elastic defense system, just like the armies on the Western Front. And just a side note, the Italians fielded 52 total divisions in the battle, the British three and the French two. The second day was worse for the Austrians. Conrad was by now retreating and his artillery batteries, which made up more than a third of all the Austrian big guns in Italy, were out of action. Oh At the Piave, God. the rain caused the river to rise and washed away a lot of the Austrian pontoons. So it was tricky business to even supply the bridgehead. The columns of men waiting to cross the river were easy targets for the Allied planes, and what Austrian artillery there was was nearly shellless, while the Allied bombardment was merciless. The Italians sent some reinforcements from the mountains to the river, and they launched a counterattack there the 19th, but they could not destroy the Austrian bridgehead. Austrian Field Marshal Svetozar Borojevich von Boina didn't want to just hang around though. He told Emperor Karl that if they could secure the Montello, then they could launch a new offensive from there. But if not, then they should abandon the bridgehead and really build up their defenses. He figured he would need at least three more divisions to do the job on the Montello. Well, Karl did not get a chance to decide what to do because German high command ordered him to end the offensive because German Quartermaster General Erich Ludendorff wanted Austria to send its best divisions to the Western Front, oh, where no. his offensives had been running out of steam. Karl talked to his chief of staff, Ars von Straussenberg, who'd replaced Conrad, and they realized that they would be in no position in the near future for any offensive action. On the 20th, Karl ordered his men back across the Piave. I read in the White War that Feldmarschall Lieutenant Ludwig Goiginger, the commander of the force that had advanced on the Montello, refused to obey this order, since he'd taken 12,000 prisoners and 84 guns. Why retreat? Well, he did eventually, though, and the hmm. last Austrians will recross the Piave on the 23rd next week. For the battle, also known as the Battle of the Solstice, the Allies lost 45,000 wounded or dead, and 40,000 prisoners. The Austrians had lost a lot more, nearly 120,000 dead, wounded, or captured. One source says That's that 20,000 Austrians drowned trying to swim the swollen river under heavy enemy fire, but I don't know about that. Allied Supreme Commander Ferdinand Foch urged Italian Army Chief of Staff Armando Diaz to go on the offensive and try to break the Austrian lines, but 
Diaz knew his limitations, and he also knew that once across the river, he'd have the same problems as the Austrians did. So he only mounted limited actions to improve his position for the time being. And while Austrian command was revising its plans, its Ottoman ally was too. Vehip Pasha is now persona non grata to the Germans for attacking them last week. So he's sent back to Istanbul and a new army, the Ninth Army, is formed around Alexandropol under Yakub Shevki Pasha. This army's supposed task is to fight British and Bolshevik threats to the Caucasus and northern Persia. But Ottoman Minister of War Enver Pasha had not given up his pan-Turanian plans or his army of Islam. See, now oh, no. he also organizes armed forces of Tartars within Azerbaijan, based at the <laughs> town of Ganja along the Tiflis-Baku railway. And the 5th Caucasian Division of the Ottoman army march across Armenia, whether the Armenians like it or not, and arrive in Ganja June 20th. Enver's half-brother Nuri Pasha will soon arrive to take command of this army. Which Wait, what? I think the math there is a little wrong. <laughs> the years don't seem right there. Because if so, he's dead. 1918. Been dead for 18 years. Which is about 6,000 Ottoman regulars and 10 to 12,000 volunteers and militia. The Ottomans are now in a position to advance on Baku and its oil fields without German objection since they are not going to use Georgian territory or Georgian railways. They were, though, going to continue the massacre of Armenians, which had been escalating in the region for the past couple of weeks. There was another change in Central Powers leadership this week. Prime Minister Vasil Radoslavov and his cabinet resigned in Bulgaria. He was popularly blamed for Bulgaria's failure to get control of all of northern Dobruja in the Treaty of Bucharest. Part of it went under joint Central Powers administration. He was also seen by many as a German puppet. Tsar Ferdinand calls on Alexander Malinov to form a new government. Malinov won't get the government he wants since Ferdinand won't release agrarian party members from prison. And he immediately <laughs> tries to pursue peace negotiations with the Allies. This is unsuccessful, and his real motive behind it was to persuade Germany to give Bulgaria some much-needed economic aid. That does not happen either, and civilian unrest, like, like bread riots, continues. I don't think Germany has the resources to give aid, though. There is even a change My in dude. the Allied command in that part of the world. Adolphe Guillaumat is recalled to Paris, where he will become the military governor of that city. His replacement as commander of the multinational Army of the Orient on the Macedonian front is Franchet Despere, a.k.a. Desperate Frankie. There had been some turbulence between the national forces there, and Serbian Army Chief of Staff Petar Bojevic had resigned as protest to Guillaumat's plans to expand the Serbian sector of the front in opposition to Serbian plans. Field Marshal Zhivoyin Mišić is the new Serbian Chief of Staff, and Vojevic has taken up his old post as commander of the 1st Serbian Army. Also this week, a secret agreement came to light. A treaty uh -oh. between Russian Bolshevik leadership and Germany is published uh -huh. in Nation's Voice yes. in Krakow. It's from a few months ago, and its terms. Polish policy to be conducted by Germany. Russian government will not interfere in the organization of Poland. Bolshevik government will remain in contact with Polish revolutionary organizations and give Germany the names of agitators. <laughs> Bolsheviks not to send any of their own agitators to Germany or Austria. Bolshevik government to prevent Russian investment in Polish industry. That's the general idea. It's for Germany to control Poland. So let me summarize the week, okay? The Germans okay. are ordering the Austrians around. The Ottomans are trying to go around the German orders. The Bulgarians have a new guy who's not a German puppet and tries to make peace to get help from the Germans who don't order him around. The Italians won't let the French order them around, but a new French guy comes to order all the allies in the Balkans around, and the Russians will not order the Polish around so that the Germans can. Simple, right? Not at all confusing. Also this week, on June 15th, not a mess. futility a poem by Wilfred Owen appeared in The Nation, and I think I will close with that. Move him into the sun. Gently its touch awoke him once, at home whispering of fields half sown. Always it woke him, even in France, until this morning and this snow. 
if anything might rouse him now. Well, a kind old son will know. Think how it wakes the seeds, woke once the clays of a cold star, our limbs so dear achieved, our sides full nerved, still warm, too hard to stir. Was it for this the clay grew tall? Oh, what made fatuous sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep at all? If you actually want to learn more about the Piave Front in Italy, we went there last year and explored the Central Powers occupation. And that was the Second Battle of the Piave River, the Great War, week 204. This wasn't too interesting of a week, in my opinion. There wasn't really, it didn't even really feel like there was much happening. Um, at least I think I'm really like, it just the same old, same old, you know, N nothing, nothing new really. I mean, kind of something new, but it was really just them being like, I want to boss you around. No, I don't want you to boss me around. I want to boss these people around. That sort of shit. Um, I haven't seen that for a while, but I mean, this wasn't, this is was a pretty boring week in my opinion. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.